ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Welcome in. It is the July, believe it or not, can you believe it or not, it's July 18th. I just looked at the calendar and I just thought to myself, we are that much closer to the start of Marshall football season. Welcome in. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. I really felt like this was not July 18th. It feels like, I don't know, we're in that weird spot right now. You know, we're, we're what, 40-some days away here? We're almost to the point where we're less than a month away? We're almost to that point. Wow. So uh, we've got a lot to get into today. Glad you're with us, by the way. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I, um, I've got open phone lines for you this hour. We don't have anybody for the show today guest-wise, so that means uh, an opportunity for you. You can use the phone lines at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. The text line, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. we got a lot to get into today. It was a busy weekend, and, of course, that means uh, we've got a few days off because baseball – Wrapping up the first half of the season. We've got the Home Run Derby coming up tonight. You can listen to that here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And then the All-Star Game is going to be tomorrow. And again, that's going to be right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So I'm looking forward to a few days of All-Star festivities. And of course, Home Run Derby. Home Run Derby. I'll say this. The home run derby is more exciting to me now than the slam dunk contest in the NBA. Slam dunk contest used to be the thing for me. But then again, you had guys like Michael Jordan participating, Dominique Wilkins, and a few others that could really go. But do you see LeBron James in the slam dunk contest? No. You don't see the major stars and the icons. Now, now, granted, you don't necessarily see all the big names in the home run derby, but you see some interesting names pop up here or there. And it's, it's just, I'm telling you, people like the long ball, the home run. It's still a pretty big deal here. Um, now, if you look at, say, the all-star game in hockey, you get the skills competition, and that's really exciting. The, yeah, it's all of that's exciting, but... There's nothing like the home run derby in comparison to some of the other sports and all-stars. Yeah, there's really not an equivalent in football. And in basketball, you got the three-point shot contest and you've got the slam dunk contest. Those are the big skills. In hockey, you have fastest skater. You have hardest shot. That's a big deal. You've got accuracy. You know, you've got a whole bunch of skill competitions, and that stuff's pretty cool. But there's nothing exciting like, at least in all-star games, nothing is exciting as a home run. I mean, it's the home run derby. I mean, we love the home run derby. Remember, way before we all were born, you remember uh, summer programming, we had home run derbies like every week here you know, during the off-season on television. You know, competitions. We had home run competitions. I forget the name of that show, but again, again, it was in black and white, and you know that's where that's where I need a, a co-host like Woody Woodrum, who is um, you know from the black and white era of television, to be in here to kind of remind me what the name of that thing was. So I had only a baseball expert as an intern to help me out with that. Apparently, I don't. The uh, what, what, you know remember because it was like a home run or nothing. That's what it was. It, you know, it was a competition. You had some pretty big names back in the day competing. I can't remember that show to say because I would see it on classic television. Because again, I'm not from the black and white television era. We had color TVs when I was born. Believe it or not, I mean they weren't connected to the internet or anything fancy like that. But they were cur- they were at least color. And you had to go down and you had to adjust the the knobs to make sure you had the right magenta and everything. You know, really hard to set those things, but. Oh, what for the life of me? I can't remember that show. That's going to bug me the entire show now. i got to find out what the name of that show was. All right, we are going to, as I mentioned, get your phone calls and text in. I want to do that with you here. Again, the phone line is 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. And toll-free, 
you can't be charged for it. It's toll free. The text line 304 396 talk. 304 396 8255. You remember when they used to say message, uh, message rates apply? Well, I mean, we're in 2022. It's free. Everybody's got unlimited talk and text. It's free. So you can call and you can text. You can reach me on Twitter as well at Paul Swan. So home run derby's coming up tonight. We're wrapping up first half of the season. And also golf, big, big, big push yesterday, maybe for Rory McIlroy, but it fell short. I mean, shot a 70 yesterday, and so he finished two strokes back of the leader. Uh, Cameron Smith winning the Open, and then Cameron Young was a stroke behind him, and then Rory McIlroy uh, was two strokes back. So uh, no Open for Rory McIlroy. But the British Open, of course, I mean, I think, honestly, some of the best golf is being played right now post-Tiger. I think we've seen some of the best golf being played right now with post-Tiger. Once we get Tiger back in the mix, I don't know if Tiger will ever even be close to being what Tiger once was. But I think we've gotten to a point now where we're seeing some really good post-Tiger golf being, being played. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to confer with Matt Grobe. Hey Matt, if you're listening, you know, just shoot me a shoot me a text if you're listening, Matt. Let me know if you think this is the best golf being played post Tiger. I think it is. So, what do we got coming up today on the show? Well, I want to get into a couple things with you. We got to go over some things that are happening. Um, there's uh, Conference USA News to talk about today. Uh, A a cool honor. We also have the Maxwell Football Club announcement coming out today. We got to get into that. We will get your phone calls and text in. We'll go over what's coming up with the TBT that is almost here upon us. Heard that. Taking on the Founding Fathers. That is the alumni team from JMU. So you've got a little Sunbelt on Sunbelt crime going on right now, at least with the alumni teams. So that'll be it. That's going to get that's going to kickstart the rivalry between Marshall and JMU. It's going to be John Elmore out there talking trash to the JMU alum. It's going to get back and we're going to have all our hostilities between Marshall and JMU and I'm here for it. So that's what we've got coming out to talk about also. The Madden ratings are out. I am not in the game again. I'm not in the game. And I might actually buy the game this year. Maybe. Because Jamar Chase has got to be rated high, right? I mean, he's one of the best wide. I mean, just fantastic rookie season. I mean, got to be one of the best wide receivers in the game, right? He's not even in the top 10. What is going on? Jamar Chase is not in the top 10 of the Madden ratings. Okay, we got to go into that. We'll have to look into that. And I mean, can someone tell me at least where Joe Burrow ranks as far as quarterbacks? I got to get that. Get me that information. I need to know. I need to know some of this stuff here because that's important. The Madden rating, I mean, there are people who will fight you over Madden ratings, and they are all in the NFL sometimes. I don't know if the fans get into that as much. I think they do a little bit, but it's the foot, it's the player's reaction to the Madden ratings that I'm into. So we'll get into all of that. And, of course, we will get your phone calls and text in. we got more coming up. You're listening to The Drive. I'm your host, Paul Swan. This is ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Do you like the show and you want to make your own? Well, let me tell you about Anchor. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And now you can even add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless for what you can create. Now, Anchor is going to distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast. No minimum listenership needed. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started.
This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Monday, July 18th edition. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Let's get into what's happening with the Thundering Herd. Of course, we're always trusting the process. We're always closing the gap, and we are always getting bigger. And today, the Herd can tout Rasheen Ali on another list. So the Maxwell Football Club making its announcement today. It's got a watch list. This is the 86th edition most outstanding player in college football, the Maxwell. And Rasheen Ali is on the list. Why is he on the list? Well, you can't overlook 1,401 rushing yards, and you can't overlook 23 touchdowns. You just cannot do it. And you cannot overlook he's going to get better. That's the thing. You have a coach that came in with a running back pedigree, and it shows. It shows. So you have to you have to love where Rasheen Ali is going. And there are a couple other schools on the list from the Sun Belt that we have to keep an eye on as well. Because, again, you're rooting for the herd players, but at the same time you want to see more on the Sun Belt side of things because you want to see this league get a little bit more notoriety. So Nate Noel, Appalachian State's on the list. You know we know him. Uh, Chase Bryce, Appalachian State again. App's good. App's just pretty good. Grayson McCall from Coastal Carolina is on the list, and then Blake Watson from Old Dominion also on the list. So we're going to keep an eye on these members. And of course, you can go on the list later, and you can fall off the list. So if you're not performing, you can drop off. It's a watch list. You know, these are players you're going to kind of keep an eye on. So you can get yourself on the list. If you're not here now, you can get yourself on the list. You know, also, uh, staying with football just for a second, Marshall quarterback, former Marshall quarterback Isaiah Green, signing with the Istanbul Rams of the European League of Football. Completed his first season of international play in Serbia. Played for the Wild Boars. The Wild Bo- That's a name right there. That's a thats a team name. I like that. The Wild Boars. Uh, he was um, he was named the MVP of the Serbian League and led the Wild Boars to the Serbian Bowl last week. Uh, they lost the title game 24-17. The Serbian Bowl. I like that. I like that. So uh, he's now with the Istanbul Rams of the European League. Uh, Serbia, MVP. That's, I mean, it's it's all right. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I like that. Okay, uh, we, have to, um, we have to acknowledge this because this is a pretty big deal. Even though Marshall's no longer in Conference USA, you hope that some of the exploits of athletes that competed in Conference USA will be recognized for years to come. And former Marshall volleyball player Kelly Ann Billingy inducted into the Conference USA Hall of Fame. This will be the class of 2022. And why not? A three-time Conference USA Player of the Year holds the Conference USA record for kills per set. And I think that it's pretty fitting that she is in the Conference USA Hall of Fame now. And she's also in the Marshall Athletics Hall of Fame. So, and here's the thing. You know, when the Southern Conference came out with its list, all of a sudden you're kind of looking and started comparing lists because I know things that I'm not supposed to know about the Marshall Hall of Fame. I know a few things that I'm not supposed to know. When I say I'm not supposed to know, I'm saying I can't tell you. Or the guy with the wooden cane will come in here and hit me. You know what I'm talking about. My former co-host, Woody Woodrum. And I don't know details the way that the committee members know, but I, I kind of get to talk to Woody sometimes about this. And I, I kind of get some ideas like, okay, where are they going? You know, what, what, what are you guys thinking about? I, I, get a little, I get a little insight that under pain of death I can't share. But I can say this. When – Things like this happen. So when the leagues 
recognize players from Marshall past, it opens up some doors. Now, obviously, Kellyanne being in the Marshall Hall of Fame, that's that's all. You don't have to rectify something here because now in the Conference USA Hall of Fame, you hope that your you hope that your athletes or in your Hall of Fame before League Hall of Fames. You would hope that, that it works that way. Sometimes it doesn't. So, you know, when you see some of these things pop up and you're you're all of a sudden thinking, okay, is this person in the Marshall Athletic Hall of Fame? Yes. Okay, good. If not, well, that needs to be rectified immediately, if possible. So, the good news is you don't have to have that conversation. The bad news is... Um, no, there's no bad news. That's that's also the good news. So, I mean, Marshall Volleyball has some really spectacular players. Uh, Kelly Ann Billingy is one of them. And tennis has some really good players. Softball has some really good players. So I think you had some definite standouts in, in women's athletics. And, you know, Kelly Ann was a beast out in the court. She was a beast. And... You hope that there will be some recognition here in years to come for the Sun Belt. You know, clean up what's uh, out there that needs to be taken care of for the conference and Conference USA. But now in the Sun Belt as well, you're hoping that, okay, you've got a new generation of of student athletes. You have a new league. Let's go out there and set some records. I mean, you're not competing to get in the Hall of Fame, but that's pretty cool. So, you know, we got to talk about that. Um, And I don't know if – you can bring Kelly in back. I mean, wouldn't it be cool if you could bring her back? I don't. Yeah, I don't know how these ceremonies work as far as the league is concerned in connection with the school. Now that Marshall's not in conference, you I say how that works. But you got to definitely put. Uh, you got to have Kelly Ann back, and if not, have her back. Programming note: I'm speaking to the intern. Have her on the show. We have our production meeting sometimes right here at this very spot. I think out loud of what I want to have happen on the show, and then Christian, if he was smart, would start writing this down. He tells me it's in his head, but I don't believe him. So uh, I've got to have Kellyanne on the show. So Kellyanne, I need her on the show. Christian, get her, get her. But I mean, if you could book her today, that would be that would be impressive. That would almost be Luke Creasy level of intern. You're shooting for Spencer Dupuis level right now. So if you can get her on this week, you get her on this week, you've, you've got the Spencer Dupuis level. And if you got to wait a couple of weeks, you've uh, you've dropped down a little bit. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just spelling it out for you right now. Okay, staff meeting op- over on this show. Text line is open, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. That's the number to be a part of of the program today. You can also join us by calling 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. That's the number to get in on the show. You can find me on Twitter at Paul Swan. Again, on Twitter at Paul Swan. We got more to talk about. Heard that, making some uh, last-minute roster additions. We'll get into that. And... We're kind of keeping an eye on um, MLB draft. Where's the herd shake out in this thing right now? We haven't seen anybody. So we keep an eye on that. More coming up to the drive, ESPN 94.1 at AM 930. We're taking Paul Swan everywhere. Download or subscribe to The Drive with Paul Swan on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to the Monday, July 18th edition. The drive continues on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. As a reminder, we got the Home Run Derby coming up tonight. It starts 8 o'clock. It's our airtime here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And then we got the All-Star Game. That's going to be tomorrow night. We go on the air at about 7 o'clock. So, Albert Pujols. The eight seed taking on Kyle Schwarber. That's not fair. <laughs> That's just not fair. 
I'm tuning in tonight. I'm excited for it. I'm looking forward to um, seeing what happens here. And that's coming up tonight. Of course, uh, Pirates baseball yesterday. The Pirates won the series uh, finale. Take it on the Colorado Rockies. Uh, and uh, 8-3 was the final. 16 hits yesterday. Talk about some offense for the Buckos. So the All-Star break means that Pirates baseball back on Friday. David Bednar going to be representing the Pirates tomorrow in the All-Star game. And um should be a fun one. Being played in L.A. It's always fun when it's played in L.A. Feels right. Dodger Stadium just feels right. L.A. L.A. Dodger Stadium just feels right. You can look at some of the new stadiums, and none of them are going to have the character of, say, Dodger Field. Dodgers. I wish more stadiums were, were, were treated that way. Just, it's pristine to this day it's just like it i mean i think that's what fans want you don't necessarily need the latest greatest modern amenities i think the fans just want some fan creature comforts here as far as going out to the ballpark and having a good time there so yeah it's gonna be fun tomorrow and uh dodger stadium's great i mean they played hockey there remember they played hockey at dodger stadium that was fun you could do anything at Dodger Stadium. So that's uh, that's what we got coming up for you tomorrow, and we got it for you here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So as I mentioned, we got the TBT coming up this week. By the way, I don't know if I've really touched on this and talked about this, but we've got the games. We're going to carry Heard That and Best Virginia games. It just so happened to work out with the schedule so we can pick those up. And... We're going to pick those games up and carry them. So if you can't necessarily go or if you got other things or you're going to be you know, where you can't be there, be by the TV, it doesn't matter. We got you covered. We're going to have those games for you. It's going to be right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And, of course, you know when the TBT hits for those few days or maybe even further, we're all heard that, fans. And, of course, the roster – the final roster, you've got the brothers Elmore, you got Stevie Browning, you got one of my all-time favorite herd players, Rondell Watson. Seriously, one of my all-time favorites. He wasn't the guy that had the biggest record book impact, but I don't put guys out there to play for the record book. I put guys out there to play and win. And Rondell Watson was a player. He went out there. He played hard. He had energy. He was, again, one of my favorite players because I like him because he's the kind of guy that if you got to go up with him, you better pack a lunch because it's going to be an all-day event. Just pack a lunch. You're going to be there. If you want to if you want to keep up with Rondell, plan for some overtime. Pack a lunch. You're going to be there a while. And then you got James Kelly, and you got Ryan Taylor. Uh, then you got some other guys uh, on the team as well. And the head of the Elmore Empire, Gay Elmore, will be the head coach of the team once again. So it looks like a solid roster. It's a good roster. It's a roster where hopefully Ott does Ott things. Elmore, I think he's getting better as a basketball player every time I see him play. So playing overseas professionally has not hurt his game. It's helped. And again, I think you're going to see a lot of people watch these tournaments. And that's the fun thing. You watch the tournaments and there are NBA players who are watching it. And you can see what they're talking about as far as, hey, why isn't this guy playing on an NBA team? Because let's be honest. There are probably some guys in this TBT that are better than guys that are on NBA rosters. And there are probably guys that are NBA rosters that have no business in the TBT. That's just how it works. So we've got those games for you. I'm excited. Hopefully we can see, heard that, get out of the West Virginia Regional. But you got to go up against a really tough, if you can win the first night, you got to go up potentially against Best Virginia. 
And I know I'm not going to make friends here saying this, but they're good. They're loaded. They're they're good. That Huggins guy, say what you will about him. I know I know the audience. I know who I'm talking to here. I know I know my people. And I'm not sure my people are going to be happy with this, but he's a good coach. He's a good coach. He's got some really talented players over the years. Plays a really intense style of basketball, and Best Virginia is going to mirror that. And so we'll see. Because you know, heard that's got a, it's got that Danny Ball feel to it a little bit. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. I'm looking forward to that matchup. You know who wins? We all do. We all do because Best Virginia heard that if those two teams meet once again, we all win. And I think that it's going to be fun. So we've got those games for you. I'm hoping we get a second round matchup between Best Virginia and heard that. If we don't, I'm going to be super disappointed because I want Best Virginia to get to the second round. I want heard that to get to the second round. And then, you know me, I'm taking, I'm taking the Brothers Elmore. They're the home team as far as I'm concerned. I know we're we're playing in Charleston, and so we know we know what the court has blue on it. Okay, so we know it it doesn't have the gold on it; it has the blue, and that's half that's half the primary colors, right? We know we know we get it. The state color. There's no Kelly green on that court, so we know we get it. That's why right now we're all heard that fan. So. Uh, we're trying to get odd on the show. I mean, when you're the social media darling of the tournament here, you're you're a hard man to get. But you know, I thought Ott liked to talk, so you know, maybe we can get yeah, maybe we get him on the show. Maybe we can get him on the show. If not, let's get Rondell Watson on. Again, we're doing a staff meeting on the show during the show. Staff meeting during the show. Christian Rondell, because he's one of my favorite players. I. St- I said that to him the last time. This was after Marshall had won a couple of years ago. The tournament got the championship. And you win the CIT. You win that championship. You say what you will. Again, it's a championship. It's a tournament. You want a, you want a champion. You want a trophy. And I got to talk to him for the final time. And I told him, I said, look, you're one of my favorite players, and you know, I'm going to miss you. And he, he really um, is somebody that I think that Marshall basketball need a more of his type of player. You need more of a you need more of a Rondell Watson on that team here. You know, he might not be the guy that gets all the accolades, but again, plan on a hard day's work if Rondell is on you. And you better be you better be on him too. Yeah, you can't take plays off against Rondell. That's what I love about him. He's a great player. We're gonna get some of your phone calls and text in. Let's do that. Text line is open 304-396 talk 304-396-8255. The phone line is toll free at 877-420 talk 877-420-8255. We've got more coming up. It's the drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I don't know if you knew this or not. SEC Media Days. That's happening. And, of course, the SEC right now, the king of college football, the de facto leader of college football, the league, if there was a power two, it would be ranked one of the two. If there was a power three, it would be one of three. If there was a power one, it would be it would be the one. You know what I'm talking about, the SEC. So, SEC today, media days, it's an opportunity for at least the SEC to set the stage and you always have the state of the SEC speech, Greg Sankey, with his speech. We can live off this for days, but here are the takeaways from SEC Media Day. First of all, let's go with college football playoff. What do we want as fans? 
that is a question that is open and loaded. As a fan of college football, I want a true playoff. Am I going to see that? Probably not, because we have no true governance of college athletics, at least especially the football side. We don't have true governance. And so we've got this system now. We've got the playoff of four teams. Well, there's talk of maybe expanding it. Now, if you go by Sankey, the takeaway here from him is that if you've got a an eight-team college football playoff with five or six automatic bids for conference champions, he's not feeling it. Of course he's not feeling it because the SEC wants all the spots. Or at least half. Get to have some other team to beat, right? I'm surprised the SEC doesn't set up its own playoff and its own tournament and just have, you know, the SEC championship is the national championship. Just declare it. Why not? So if we have an eight-team college football playoff, don't look for that automatic bid for the Sun Belt. Don't look for that automatic bid. Because, if, if again, if the SEC has its way, if, if we let the SEC set the stage here for this. Another, another takeaway is, if you believe it, once Texas and Oklahoma get into the SEC, depending on when Texas and Oklahoma can get out of the Big 12 and get into the SEC, there are really not any plans at the moment, interest there, in expanding beyond Texas and Oklahoma. So they're still set to come in 25-26 season. And there's really not any feeling of, okay, who else is out there? we got to get someone else. we got to expand this here. So the SEC might be set. I don't know if I believe it or not, but it makes sense. The SEC seems to be locked right now. Because if you look at who else is out there, who else is out there that could really make an impact? You're, you're looking at teams that I don't think make sense to begin with getting together. At least with the SEC, it it's a little bit more cohesive. I mean, the Big Ten, hey, sure, we'll have a West Coast division. Sure, why not? Hey, let's add Rutgers to our league. Why not? Because when I think of power football, I think of Rutgers. I don't think of Rutgers when I think of power football. So no expansion here. I mean, there's really not to, you know, and I just don't know if we're going to um, see a playoff anytime soon. I don't, and maybe in my lifetime. I think it would be great if we had a playoff with automatic bids. You got to win your conference. Win your conference, you get in this thing. So you have the Big Ten champ, the SEC champ, the Big 12 champ, the ACC champ, the Pac-12 champ. I don't know if they'll be around. That's the question. Okay, so you could have right there. I mean, that that's five. You could have the Sun Belt champ. Why not? Why not have the Sun Belt champ? Why not have... The American champ. I don't know. Maybe the American and maybe the Sun Belt should just basically get together and say, all right, let's go in with these guys, see what, how far, the, you know, let's just go in with them and see if we can we can get in and screw the rest of these. Of, of Mac, you're just, you do you. Mac, you do, you always do you, you do you. Conference USA, you do you. Have fun. Mountain West, you because again, is the Mountain West going to be around or is the Pac-12 going to be around? Which one you know, is the Big 12 going to absorb teams from the Pac-12 and then you're going to have some leftovers left? Say, so, hey, you do you. Maybe the Sun Belt and the American could just like have a sort of, okay, we're not friends, but we're not enemies. So... Let's just work our way in where it's one of us or both of us. We get in this playoff thing. Just hose the other guys. 
I don't, I don't know. I, I think some bell commissioner to Keith Gill is a pretty smart guy. I don't think he's a I don't think he's a, a jerk. So I don't know if he would be like trying to figure out a way to hose other conferences like that. Maybe not. I don't know. He seems like a real good guy. What else are uh, What else are we talking about here at the SEC? Uh, Sankey wanted. And this makes me laugh because they can't fix anything. And this is the one time where I will mention politics on this show, but I'm not going to get into politics in this show. That is not the content. Uh, I will say this proudly. I don't care what your political affiliation is. It don't come here. It doesn't matter here. It, this is not the place for it. You can, it, And you can take it walking. This is not the place here. I am not that guy. You want that? There are other places for you. We're not that show. I'm not that guy. I don't. I'm not here. I'm not here for your political affiliations. I'm here to talk to sports with you. I'm here to inform you and entertain you. With that said, Sankey wants the United States Congress to come up with federal legislation on name, image, and likeness rules. So first of all, we want. Congress, we want Congress to fix name, image, and likeness. Congress. Have you, have you seen Congress? And I don't care what political party we're talking about, it's broke. Remember when President Obama promised us the football playoff? Maybe, you know, we, no, we're not doing that. I think it was... I think it was him. Congress can't Congress can't fix this. I mean, there, yeah, I think there should be legislation here. It's a little low on the on the priority list as far as I'm concerned. There are other things that we need to work on as a country. And name, image, and likeness is not far on my list. I mean, look, we want Congress. I think we had a governing body that could have worked on this. It was the NCAA, and it dropped the ball. So now we want Congress to fix this mess. No. The NCAA had an opportunity years ago. It could have legislated this thing, and it could have set policy, and we could be in a better place where we're at now. Instead, we're getting to the point now where the commissioner of the most powerful football conference in America wants Congress to work on name, image, and likeness. Okay. I I admire you for wanting that. I think it's admirable for us to want to have unified rules, and I believe we should have unified rules. But Congress isn't going to fix it. Not this season. Not this season. So... That's a, that's going to be a big question here. Can Congress fix name, image, and likeness? I mean, we can't even get a football playoff going. If anything, I want Congress to fix that first. Congress fix the playoff system, and then we'll work on name, image, and likeness right now. We'll work on that later. I think this thing's going to level off here soon because we're, we're going to get to the point where, again, you're not going to have... I mean, we're not doing pay for play here. It might feel it, but we're not getting to that point where we're just doling out cash. I mean, the whole point of name, image, and likeness was a player can profit off of the name, the image, and likeness that the value that that player has generated. He can, or she, he or she can, yeah, get some value out of that. It's not set up for Alabama to start handing out checks. Here, hand out some checks. And wasn't Lane Kiffin talking about having like a cap on on the on the amount of NL, NIL money? I mean, are we going to cap this? Who's going to legislate that? We're going to cap this? So you're telling me if I can go out and make a million that I can't because Somebody can't. At the same time, you got to look at it from the standpoint of, okay, we just got to the point now where we're 
these are supposed to be student athletes, and we're just we're paying them. I mean, so develop a minor league, a true minor league. If we want to do pay for play like that, where we're we're talking about salaries, we want to go into a true minor league system. If we want to regulate this, where we have rules and ways to govern this, and it actually is a system where a player can earn revenue off of the name value, the image value, and the likeness value that that player has created, you know, I think that could be worked out completely. I mean, at the same time, let's be honest here. I mean, there are going to be schools that, it, yeah, if there are loopholes, uh, that the fan bases, there's gonna, there will be people who take advantage of the loopholes. And with all that said, thanks for tuning in. This has been The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow. We're going to do it all over again with you. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope you had a great night. Don't forget Home Run Derby coming up tonight. We go on the air 8 o'clock. All-Star game coming up tomorrow, and it's all right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington. This is your radio home for Pittsburgh Pirates baseball, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.